our channel. In today's video, we will be continuing with the Moon Sign Sinistry series. And today we will be looking at having your, your moon in your partner's second house. So before we get into it, we just want to remind you guys to please be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And if you like the video, please also do hit that like button. Um, and leave us a comment in the comment section down below to let us know what you thought of our interpretation and if you've ever experienced having this overlay with someone or your views on it. So, without any further ado, let's get into this video. Sharing this sinistry overlay with someone could possibly mean a really good relationship. In this partnership, the moon person tends to want to help the house person. This could be helping them in the sense of financial help um, or helping them with assets or giving financial advice. The support and advice is usually very helpful to the house person and in many cases can really help improve their, um, their investments and financial security. The moon person really likes taking care of the house person and showering them with attention. And the house person in turn doesn't have a problem with accepting or receiving rather and making the house for the moon person happy. Still, it's important that these two partners express gratitude towards each other because the moon can be very sensitive in this overlay and so feelings can really be hurt if um, one partner is not grateful towards the other partner's help. While the moon person can really help the house person um, and get their finances in order, it's also possible that the moon person could end up costing the house person a lot of money sometimes. The moon person can be quite emotionally attached to the house person. It's a pretty practical overlay and generally the moon person really values the house person particularly because they view the house person as a source of emotional security. In some cases it is possible that the practicality of this overlay can result in one of those types of relationships where the people are together mostly just because it's the emotionally safe thing to do. The moon person feels very emotionally attached and secure with the house person and so the relationship become, becomes like a comfort zone and it's a very practical type of a relationship and not really very romantic or passionate. This sort of relationship is not necessarily known for its dramatic sparks, but it can be a really nurturing relationship. And in some cases, the house person can sometimes exhibit some possessive tendencies towards their moon partner because these partners really value each other in the same way that a child values their favorite comfort blankie or stuffed animal. These partners should just be careful that the relationship does not become a relationship that's primarily based on emotional attachment, geared towards simply meeting one's own emotional needs. Because sometimes when we value our partners in a way that is primarily attachment based, even if it is an emotional attachment, we can lose sight of what it means to be in a truly loving romantic relationship. Yes, relationships should generally be based on love and genuine connection, not necessarily just need-based attachment. The difference between a relationship that's based on genuine love versus a need-based attachment is that need-based attachments usually become very draining in the long run. With this overlay, one partner can easily have a lot of emotional power over the other partner without even being aware of it. In this connection, 
or attachment. Ultimately, one partner can easily emotionally manipulate the other partner if they really wanted to. This especially can be dangerous if a person in this connection is a malicious person with some bad intentions. Since the second house is the house of material possessions, finances and assets and etc. If one partner had bad intentions in this connection, they could easily, in some cases, use emotional manipulation to get a lot out of their partner, particularly in the form of um, assets or luxuries, you know, any sort of material gains. Basically, there's just a lot to gain, you know, when it comes to the second house. So partners should just be careful of that. Our advice is that these two partners consider why they are in this relationship to begin with. What is it truly that they value about their partner? And is it genuine love or is it an attachment? And from there, they can assess the true value of this connection. Ultimately, this overlay works best if the partners have earth sign energy in their individual charts, or if the two partners are just practical people who exhibit earth sign type of tendencies. This overlay doesn't have to be the most romantic, but it really can last a very long time, especially depending on the type of people that the two partners are. It will work very well if the two people are practical people who view love very sensibly. You know, um, considering it practically from the viewpoint of being a means to get one's own emotional needs met on a practical and sensible level that guarantees emotional security and is not too much of a risk. So that does it for this video on having your moon fall into your partner's second house. Thank you so much for tuning in to listen to our interpretation. So before you go, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up if it resonates and be sure to tell us what you think of our interpretation of having your moon fall into your partner's second house. Yes, what have your experiences been with this overlay or have you seen it play out with someone else? Let us know. And finally, um, please be sure to give this video a share if you think someone would benefit from hearing it. Yes, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so. So this is where we love and leave you guys. Have a good one, guys. Bye. Bye.